today I'm going to talk about the three chicken breeds I chose this spring and I'm going to tell you all about them. Let's go. Welcome to Becky's Homestead. a little red sex link chick. Look, it's so adorable. Okay, so a, a red sex link is a cross between two breeds. It's usually a Rhode Island red rooster and a Delaware hen. And that cross makes a red sex link. They're great, great egg layers. They're just like nice, nice chickens. They lay, I say a tan egg but you know, technically it's like a light brown egg, but you know, it looks kind of tan. Um, these chickens, if they're happy and healthy, they can lay up to 300 eggs a day, a day we wish, <laughs> a year, <laughs> which is a great egg layer. Again, they're not really known to be a broody breed that wants to hatch out babies. For whatever reason, they just don't seem to be that way. And they're a cute, cute little chicken. They're not huge. Again, they're not really known as a dual purpose breed, meaning you can eat them for meat and for eggs. These are egg layers. And I do wanna say a lot of the stores, you know, if you go to the bigger stores like Tractor Supply or, you know, other stores, they try to seem like they sell the egg layers. That's what they concentrate on because they figure, you know, that's what people want in their backyard. This isn't the most friendly breed either. It's a little on the nervous side. So be aware of that when you're choosing your breeds for your flock. You know, some have very friendly personalities and others don't. And it seems like these super egg layers are a little on the nervous side. So they're not going to be super, super friendly. Here's a little side note I want to give everybody. The nervous breeds that are these gray egg layers, they seem to like the roost that they sleep on at night a little bit higher, which makes sense that a nervous bird would want to get up as high as it could to roost at night. So when you're building your coop and designing it, just keep that in mind and put the roost maybe six feet high if you want to get some white leg horns and some sex links. That way you can make sure you keep them happy you know, give them what they want and keep them happy. Okay, so this is a little bantam, which are so, so adorable. Bantams are like little mini chickens. They're very, obviously mini, they're very small in size. And they lay cute little tiny mini eggs, of course, because they're so small. The eggs are completely safe and edible. But one thing to keep in mind is that they don't seem to be fantastic egg layers. In fact, you know, they might be medium to low in the output of eggs that they lay. But if you want to just like spruce up your coop and just have some cute little interesting birds, bantams are a great choice, you know, for have fun with your chickens. And there's a lot of show chickens are bantams just because they're very like animated and they're just have great colors a lot of the breeds and bantams come in almost every breed you can get a little mini bantam so you can have so much fun if you want to just have more of a pet chicken that's what you're into but you know you do get a few eggs bantams are a good breed to choose here's a little white leghorn chick um, this breed is used throughout the world in a lot of countries as an egg layer. These are awesome, awesome egg layers. They lay a medium to large white egg. And they, if you keep them happy and healthy, they can lay up to 320 eggs a year. They're one of the best. So if you want to keep your chickens, your backyard flock, strictly for egg production, a white leghorn is a fantastic choice. I want to say that they are more of a nervous chicken breed, so they're not a friendly, lovey-dovey chicken. Um, they 
are flighty. So, you know, if you want them to be like more of a pet and a friendly type chicken, this wouldn't be the breed for you. But if you want eggs, 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 a white leghorn is awesome. Also, they're not really a broody breed because I guess because they're on the nervous side and they're just all business laying those eggs. They don't want to hatch them out. So, you know, that's fine for me. You know, you don't need tons of broody hens. So it's a great chicken breed to choose. I do want to say they free range well if you want to let them out of your coop. The only thing you have to keep in mind is being white in color, that they're very easy for the predators to spot on the ground and to, you know, pick them off and kill them. So be very careful if you do want to free range your white leghorns. What I want to show you is, I'm going to start from the top and work down. I want to show you the wire lid I made so the little chickens can't escape and also so my cat or anything else can't get in there because, you know, the little birds moving around in there draw attention. Also, if you keep them outside, like I'm keeping them in my closed in barn part of my barn, make sure you have adequate heat so the little chicks don't freeze to death. And how you do that is you have to have a thermometer. And right here, I have it on a little piece of my fencing wire, is a little thermometer hooked in there so I can keep track of the temperature. The temperature with your baby chicks, the need for the temperature does go down five degrees every seven days. So keep that in mind. Also, this lamp I have here, I use the fence wire and I attach it to the top so the cat or anybody can't move this. I take my fence wire and I attach it to the lid. That way the cat or anything can't bump this off and cause a fire hazard in my barn. So just keep safety in mind at all times. And then that part's, that part's good. So we have the lid, we have the thermometer, and we have the heat lamp attached so it can't fall off or get knocked off. All right, so now I'm going to open the lid and show you inside how I have my setup. I like the water in the middle so they can go around the water. So it's like the little fountain in the middle. I put it up on a tile because that way when they're picking and scratching, they don't get a lot of the wood chips and sand. Once the chicks are a little older, I do like to use sand on the bottom. It just is less messy. The wood chips will fill this up and it'll be very hard to keep it clean. You'll have to, you know, tend to them several times a day. When they're small, it's perfect, but once they get a little older, they're more active. So then I have the food bowl here. And what I like to do, I built this little perch here for the chickens. Even tiny, tiny little chickens <laughs> love to perch. And it just, adds like natural environment to them even when they're tiny and there's nothing cuter than when I come out and they're all lined up on this perch, all the little babies. I wish I could have a camera in there and get a picture of it because it's the most adorable thing ever. Another thing I want to point out is I do have my little bantam in here with these bigger breeds. In the beginning when they're little fuzzballs, they're separate because the bigger chickens will lay down on the little bantams and squish them. And you'll come out and they'll be dead in the morning, just suffocated from the big one, squishing it down all night. It uses it like a pillow, kind of. And of course, it doesn't mean to do that. They're all just trying to snuggle together. But of course, the little one pays the price. I hope this helps describe the three breeds I chose this year. And the reason I chose them is because, you know, of course, egg production. But I always have to throw in a little interest just to make the flock fun and interesting throughout the year. If you want to learn a little bit more about chickens and you need a little help possibly or you're new and just coming into chickens, I wrote a great chicken book that'll help you and you can purchase that by clicking the link that's in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Today I'm going to talk about the three chicken, oh my, today cut.